Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Easter service and happy Resurrection Day to everyone. Uh, what a blessing it is to be here uh, in the house of the Lord. I uh, want to welcome each one of you, uh, anyone who is uh, watching online, uh, on our live feed. How about that? That's a little better. Um, what a beautiful day it is. And uh, it's so good to see each one of you here. Uh, I just have to, have to single out Ron and Rebecca. It's uh, been a while since we've seen each other. It's a, it's a blessing for you, to, for you to be here. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. If you would, uh, let's all bow our heads and we'll open with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are, are grateful uh, for the beautiful weather we have here today, the sunshine. We thank you for the rain in the days past. Uh, we thank you for providing all that we need. Uh, we thank you especially uh, for the significance of this day as uh, we come together uh, to worship you as we celebrate uh, our risen Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you would, turn in your uh, hymnals to number 328. Surely the presence of the Lord. We'll sing through that one time to open up our service. And again, thank you all for being here. I, I don't know that we have uh, any special announcements this week. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's usually, uh, I'll think of them when my, my wife reminds me of it when I get home. And speaking of my wife, I want to say hello to her. Uh, my wife, Mary Jean, and her mother, Mary, are home watching online as she recovers from her uh, foot surgery. It's uh, going well. And I uh, just want to mention uh, our prayer request. And if, uh, if anybody has any requests, uh, we can add to them. Uh, of course, we're going to continue to pray for all the storm victims, the McDowell family, uh, David Farley, John and David Minton, Jeff Blackwood, Linda Farley, Jackie Lewis and her father and her aunt, Hope Cannon, Melissa and Carolyn Zavala, Curtis Reed, all the COVID families, all the health care providers, our country, uh, Dot Smith, Lola Ruth and Julie Adams, Stacy Culp Langford, uh, Paul Moon, uh, talked to him last night. He is actually in the hospital in Rome, Georgia, expecting to get out today. So uh, we'll be in prayer for his recovery. Uh, we have many unspoken prayers. We have Laura's sister Sandy. I continue to pray for Nora as she recovers. John Wayne Minton. Uh, Jerry and Sherry's neighbor Gwen. Uh, Childers family. Uh, Doug Hood and Stephanie Silver. Uh, are there any others we need to add at this time? And Bruce Music also had a stroke this weekend, and he's in the hospital. What was his name? Bruce Music. And 
and his brother Roger Music has been covering from several illnesses over the last year. He's improved greatly. Okay, thank you. For those. Any others? How about unspoken prayer requests? Thank you very much. Uh, we will pray a little bit later in the service. Uh, so if there's any others you need to add at a later date, we'll, we'll pray at that time. Uh, so at this time, I invite you to t uh, take your hymnals, and uh, we're going to sing a popular song, number 322. 322. Up from the grave he arose, and we'll sing all three verses.
to number 364, 364, because he lives. And we'll sing all three verses. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As has been our practice since we've been back in church, we won't be passing the offering plate today, but we have one here on the altar table and one on a table by the back door. I invite you to uh, drop anything in there uh, at the end of the service as we are leaving. So at this time, if you'll bow your heads, we'll offer a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are gr grateful for all that you do for us. Lord, we're thankful for you providing everything that we need. Lord, at this time, I ask you uh, to bless the tithes and offerings that will be given and received this week. Uh, Lord, uh, help us uh, to understand the true meaning of generosity. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are there any other names we need to add to our list this morning, our prayer list? Okay, I just remind you of the names we mentioned earlier. Uh, and let, let's just remember all people. That seems real easy to say and do. We just pray for everybody. But you know, I think sometimes we need to just pray for everybody because uh, I don't care who you are you can always uh, use more of God in our lives if you would let's uh, we'll all bow our heads Sherry will play softly and uh, invite you to join me in prayer and then I'll close this directly and we'll close with the Lord's prayer let's bow our heads
Great God in heaven, as we listen to the music of the old rugged cross, we think back to Thursday and all that went that Jesus had to go through to get to Friday that led to the cross. Although the cross was the vehicle used to put him in a tomb. We celebrate today the fact that the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. We celebrate Resurrection Day today because we serve a risen Savior. And the Spirit is still with us today. Lord, we're thankful for what that means for each one of us. And for all of our lives. Lord, we lift up all the names that were mentioned earlier. And in an unusual request, Lord, we just we pray for everybody. Everyone today who knows you, and especially those who don't know you. This is a day that can make a difference in people's lives. And maybe something that happens today will affect someone who later on will affect someone. And allow your love to shine through something that we do or say. Lord, we ask your forgiveness for where we have failed you in the days past. And we humbly accept and live washed in the blood of Jesus. Lord, help us to take a little bit of this resurrection day with us each day in the future. Help us to be ever mindful and not forget the price that was paid and the miracle that occurred on this same day 2,000 years ago. And Lord, hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I would invite Sherry to come up, who has something for us. Nothing on my own. I make mistakes, I often slip. Just common flesh and bones. But I'll prove 
prove someday just why I say I'm of a special kind. For when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. For he So unworthy of such mercy, yet when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. His face and thorns were on his head. Blood was on his scarlet robe and stained a crimson red. Though his eyes were on the crowd that day, he looked. Ahead in time, for when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. For he So unworthy of such mercy, yet when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for the beautiful music this morning. It's been a great experience. It's, I remember this time last year at Easter Sunday, we were all locked down and uh, listening to church either on the computer, on our phone, called in on a phone line, um, and some are still doing that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but I just want to say that it's good to be in God's house on Easter Sunday. Amen. 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 So... Uh, one of the things that we always do around here, just uh, can't get away from some songs that we always sing every year. Pat mentioned this a few weeks ago. We got to sing for all my sin. Um, so whatever Pat says, we have to do. <laughs> so um, if you've been here before, you know you, you know this song probably. So, but just listen to the words of the of, uh, for all my sin, along with the song "Have You Been to Calvary." which will follow for all my sins. So, 
Um, so again, it's just good to be in the house of God this morning. So just enjoy the music this morning. i 
turning my mic on and off because last week Mary Jean told me that she heard me singing a solo every time we sang a song <laughs> and bless her heart you know my wife is sweet as she can be and she uh, says you know it really wasn't that bad <laughs> I uh, uh that, uh, John, I guess that, that joyful noise thing has got mine, your name beside it. <clears throat> but, uh, anyways, uh, I was sitting there, it was about a quarter to 11, and I'm thinking, man, this thing's going fast. We'll, we'll be out of here by 11.15. Well, it's, it's 11.15. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we're not out, but, uh. I appreciate you being here today. Uh, I've just been been blessed. I, I just I just feel like I ought to uh, feel like I ought to just give the invitation and let's go home. It's uh, it's been very uh, meaningful and moving, and it's been a real blessing to me. Uh, today is the 14th Sunday of 2021. We mark the end of the first quarter last week, the year's a little bit more than 25% gone already. It's hard to believe. Um, time flies. But with, uh, with time comes change. And uh, I don't know about you, but it seems to me like the word change is a bad word in the church. Start talking about change, and boy, you start getting some, a lot of opinions about it. But that's just part of life. Um, I got a lot of stories uh, about change and, and how 
life can change at the turn of a hat. So I, uh, I title my message today in the blink of an eye. Because sometimes that's how things change. When you blink, your eyelids clear away dust particles and spread lubricating fluids across the eyeballs. Every time you blink, your eyelids sweep oils and mucus secretions across the surface to keep them from drying out. Never really thought about that, but that's what happens. You do not really notice the momentary darkness throughout the day that is being created from blinking, do we? The human brain actually ignores the blackness so that you can have a continuous experience. The average human blink lasts only about a tenth of a second, which is 100 milliseconds. Now, that's real fast. Sometimes it can even last up to 400 milliseconds. To put this into perspective, a tick of a clock lasts one second, making it possible to blink three times during the single tick of a clock. It is safe to say that, uh, what I usually say a lot, uh, that humans blink a lot. The average person blinks between 15 to 20 times per minute. This means that our eyes are closed for roughly 10% of the time that we're awake. I really thought about that. We know that blink lasts an average about a tenth of a second. Now we know that a person blinks about 500 and 20 million times in an average lifespan. Here's a list of how long we spend in our lives blinking. 5,200,000 5, seconds are spent blinking. 863,452 minutes we blink. 14,390 hours. 599 days of our life are spent blinking. Normally when we say a blink of an eye, we're talking about a very short period of time, something that happens very quickly and sometimes unexpectedly. Now, I don't know about you, unless I'm looking in the mirror, I don't think about myself blinking. You know, I, I, we were, Mary G and I were watching TV the other night, and there was... Uh, somebody on TV and, and, and they were constantly blinking just constant I, and I just how in the world I don't know that I could take that Adam and Eve altered the trajectory of the entire earth and human race in the time it took to take one bite out of the forbidden fruit King David changed life King David's life changed forever in the time it took a small, smooth stone to leave his sling and sink into the forehead of Goliath. The zealous Pharisee Saul had his life changed forever in a moment that blinded him on the road to Damascus. Our scripture today has three women whose lives were changed in the blink of an eye or at least in the time it took for an angel to say a few seconds. Our scripture today is from Mark 16, verses 1 through 8. And scripture says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will ro roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? I never really thought about that a lot, but this was a, a, a large stone covering an entrance. It probably wasn't as big as that door. But uh, it, was, it was set in a track, and it went into a groove, and the stone was rolled. And once it rolled closed, it was very difficult to get that rock rolled out of that groove and back up the hill. That's why the women asked this question. But when they looked up, 
they saw the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go and tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Finally, in verse 8, it says, Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word today. Thanks be to God. There is a popular saying that we've all heard. There's nothing certain except for death and taxes. Madsen Peary wrote on the website adamsmith.org. It was on November 13th, 1789 that Benjamin Franklin wrote in a letter to John Baptiste Leroy a phrase that has reverberated ever since. Quoting Benjamin Franklin, Our new constitution is now established and has an appearance that promises permanency. But in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. The thought had been expressed by two earlier writers, Daniel Defoe and the in the political history of the devil in 1726 and said things as certain as death and taxes can be firmly believed. And even earlier, Christopher Bullock's The Cobbler of Preston in 1716 appears the line, "'Tis impossible to be sure of anything but death and taxes." But history has bestowed this honor and quotation to Benjamin Franklin. However, it can be said that the only constant in life is change. Greek philosopher Herodotus said this 2,500 years ago, change is inevitable. Many don't like change, but some do. I think in general, humans like things to say the same, stay the same. My wife would fall into that category. It's easier that way. Some changes we plan and have to prepare. Other times it hits us quickly and unexpectedly. Mary Magdalene Salome, who was said to be the, mother, the wife of Zebedee and the mother of James and John, were doing their affectionate and loving duty of coming to anoint the body of Jesus with spices early on that first Easter morning. They were wondering who would roll the large stone back that had sealed the entrance. As I mentioned earlier, this would kind of be like the difference in pushing a car that wasn't running down a hill and then turning around and trying to push that car back up the hill. But to their surprise, the stone was already rolled away. Then they, surprised, then they received surprise number two. There was a young man dressed in a white robe waiting there to greet them. He told them that Jesus, whom they had come to anoint, was not there. He is risen, he told them. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go and tell the disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Verse 8 says that the women were trembling and bewildered and afraid as they fled from the tomb. It does not say specifically, but I could tell you these women were changed forever. Think about it. Think about that, being there and seeing that empty tomb. Put yourselves in their shoes. 
Wouldn't you be afraid? Bewildered? Shaking like a leaf? Scratching your head? Wondering what ha happened? Personally, I believe that I would have been hyperventilating. I have a habit of that. Doesn't happen very often, but when I get really stressed, I hyperventilate. If you've ever done that, it's a very, very uncomfortable feeling. I think there is some significance to the angel singling out and separating Peter from the other disciples in telling the women who to inform. I think right about then, uh, Peter must have been feeling pretty low, don't you imagine? Living with guilt and shame of, falling, of failing to keep the faith, but his reinstatement into the fold of the inner circle would soon be coming, we know. I already mentioned Adam and Eve, King David, and the Apostle Paul. God has been changing things since the beginning of time. Think about it. God made the universe in six days. Again, think about how God changed things during this past Holy Week. 2,000 years ago, God used this time in Jesus' last days to change all things for all people. Consider the highs and the lows of the past week, the triumphal entry, the palm branches waving, and the huge adoring crowds, the turning of the tables in the temple, the upper room, the last supper, the betrayal and exposing of G Judas. The agony of prayer in the garden, the arresting of Jesus, the mockery of a trial, parading of Jesus before Herod and Pilate, the beating, the whipping, the flogging that ripped the body of Jesus, the public humiliation of the crowds who waved the palm branches choosing to release Barabbas instead of Jesus, the crown of thorns carrying his own cross, Calvary, the spike, driven, the spike driven into his hands and feet, and then finally Jesus took his final breath. The universe was changed forever. Jesus changed the world of his disciples in the blink of an eye by saying two words, follow me. Jesus made the blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, and the lepers to be clean in the blink of an eye. I believe I would be safe in saying that Jesus changed everyone that he met. And even all of us whom we never met personally. 2,000 years later, Jesus even changed me. And he continues to change me every day. Some more than others. But that is up to me. God's timing is different than anything that we can understand. But one thing that I do know and understand is that God changes things in the blink of an eye. It doesn't take long, most times unexpectedly. What really matters is how we respond to those changes. We can ignore it, dismiss it, or deny it. But we would be wiser to accept and embrace what God has planned for us. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. God sent Jesus to offer the world a cleansing power greater than anything that we can imagine. So let me ask you today. Have we allowed Jesus to change us. And I mean really change us. Life altering, difference making change. Kind of hard to say the words of a song while a tune is playing. But I want to ask you, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? 
Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb today? If you can honestly answer yes to these questions, then all is well. If there is any doubt, and I mean even a speck of doubt in your mind about any of this, now is the time to settle things with God. Now is the chance. I just want to say that I'll be glad to talk with any one today or at any time in the future, or you can talk with someone who you trust about whatever is on your mind. But I just want to caution you. Unless things are perfectly in order and all is right with God, things can change quickly in the blink of an eye. I want to invite Pat and Cherry to come and uh, invite you to turn your United Methodist hymnals the red hymnals to number 301. Jesus, keep me near the cross. And we'll sing the first and the second verses. First and the second verses. And now, Lord, we thank You for all things. And Lord, may Your love watch over us. May the grace of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, abound in our lives. And may the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit guide our paths, our tongues, in all that we do, so that we might bring glory to You. For it's in Jesus' name we pray on this resurrection day. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming.